Destiny's meta is constantly evolving and I wanted to take a stab at capturing this moment in time in the last season leading up to the final shape. So here's my list of the top 10 PvE and top 10 PvP weapons right now as sort of a screenshot of the state of the meta. These are roughly ranked from worst to best, but there's a lot of wiggle room to juggle the order around, so don't take it too strictly. Starting off our list in PvP, we have the Amit AR-2. Months ago, this thing was being crafted as basically a full auto shotgun. But even after the glitch was fixed, this auto rifle has hung around as a solid pick in the meta. Since it's craftable, you can create any role that you want after you get the patterns, and it's full of great choices. With options like tap the trigger and dynamic sway reduction, a ton of range and a great stats package, it's no surprise to see it used pretty often. The 450 autos used to be a laughingstock of the Crucible, and I always waited for the day when they would finally get their time to shine, and the Amit has been leading the pack as one of the favorite options among auto rifle enthusiasts. At number 10 for PvE, we have a reissued weapon from Destiny 1 that has made quite a splash this season. Dragon's Breath is no ordinary rocket launcher. It fires rockets that can embed themselves in targets and spew out fuel that scorches and explodes everything nearby. And the exotic catalyst makes it even more destructive. This single rocket launcher can wipe an entire room of adds with ease, and it's not hard to see why it's become such a popular weapon in PvE this season. If you're not wanting to use your heavy slot just for ag clear though, I have a solution for you. My personal favorite bow in the game, Trinity Ghoul. Ever since the catalyst was added to the game that made it significantly easier to proc the lightning rod perk, this bow has been an absolute monster for ad clearing. You can single-handedly wipe entire rooms of enemies one arrow at a time. It's excellent for solo activities, whether you're just running some mindless farming routes or you're trying to speed clear some lost sectors, but it's also great for group play and it can make being put on ad duty a breeze. Sure, it doesn't pack the DPS punch of some of the rest of the list, but it's one of the most fun ways to play Destiny, and if you're a new or returning player and you haven't given Trinity a try yet with the Catalyst, you're really missing out. Before we move on to the next weapon, I have a question for you. Do you have a favorite Marvel character? I've watched almost all of the movies and I used to read the comics, and one of my favorites has always been The Punisher. So I was pretty excited to learn that I could play as The Punisher in Marvel's Strike Force game. I'm usually not a big mobile game player, but I decided to try it out when they wanted to potentially sponsor a video and I have to admit I had a lot of fun playing it. 40 minutes seemed to fly by in the blink of an eye. This game is a turn-based RPG where you can play as a ton of heroes from the Marvel Universe, and I really mean a ton. As I'm making this video, I think there's 269 playable characters, a few of which I've never even heard of. They're also adding new characters constantly. You can create a squad of these heroes to fight your battles in various modes. Just like in Destiny, you can outfit your heroes with items in each of their character slots to make them more powerful, and you can also level them up by using them in battles and collecting power-ups. One of the things I really liked about the game is how certain heroes synergize together to deal damage as a team. There's a lot of these cool little interactions that happen as you play. There's also a lot of strategy required to play optimally. For example, you can't just spam your most powerful attacks every single turn, so you have to choose when you want to use these special abilities. For a limited time this month, you can use the QR code on screen or click the link in the description and you'll unlock exclusive characters for free just by logging in. Celebrate the release of Marvel Studios Echo by unlocking Echo for free. You can also redeem promo code CARDS to unlock the character Gambit and extra resources, including 500 power cores and 5 premium orbs for free. Thanks to Marvel Strike Force for sponsoring, and let's get back to some more Destiny meta weapons. Next up for PvP, we have my personal favorite sniper rifle, the Mercurial Overreach. This one comes from the competitive playlist, and you can focus roles each week under the Legacy Weapons tab from Lord Shax in the tower. This thing dethroned Beloved is my pick for the best legendary sniper in the game, specifically because it has the perk combination of Snapshot and Opening Shot. These perks combined with the great default aim assist set and some great handling boosting options makes it a joy to use in the Crucible. I'd argue it's the best overall sniper in the game, except there's one other option these days that might be even scarier to come across than a god rolled mercurial. It also sits in the energy weapon slot, which means you can pair it with some of the best primary weapons in the game, which will be covered a little bit later in the list. Snipers are largely a matter of personal preference, and a lot of that comes down to the zoom level and the reticle shape. For me though, 40 zoom is a sweet spot for PvP, and I've loved the mercurial reticle ever since they made it a little bit bigger than the original implementation. At number 9 for PvE, we have a shotgun that has been a staple in many loadouts for a few years now. The Slug Shotgun Heritage comes from the Deepstone Crypt raid, and even though Bungie nuked the Double Slug Quick Swap meta a while back, it's still a really popular option for good reason. It had its perks updated when the Deepstone weapons became craftable, and although some of the newer perks are pretty attractive for PvP, I think most players are sticking with a tried and true combination of Reconstruction and Recombination. Reconstruction automatically refills your magazine to double the capacity, and Recombination can boost your first bullet by up to 100% bonus damage. This makes it an awesome weapon for both burst damage and sustained damage against tankier enemies. 
Number 8 for PvP has been the best legendary shotgun in the game for a long time now. Matador 64 is a throwback to a very popular shotgun in Destiny 1 that was also a top meta choice for a long time. In Destiny 2, it features the combination of opening shot and threat detector. This gives you fantastic consistency and one-shot kill range, plus fantastic handling whenever enemies are nearby. And when enemies are nearby, a shotgun is usually the best choice, so this is a natural pairing. I'd say it's the best shotgun in the game, except there's one other option that slightly edges it out a little bit later on in the list. For the energy slot though, I don't think you're beating the Matador until Bungie either adds some new options or changes up the shotgun meta some way. I'm still personally waiting for that stupid ogre to give me a god roll, which has eluded me for years now. Next up for PvE, we have a slew of fusion rifle options. I thought it made more sense to combine each of these into a single entry because they're basically interchangeable depending on which elements you need for a particular build or which perks you prefer. We're looking at Riptide, Scatter Signal, and Cartesian Coordinate. These fast firing fusion rifles are amazing in PvE for dealing some significant damage to tankier enemies who are a little bit outside of the comfortable slug shotgun ranges, but not so far away that you need to resort to sniper rifles. Riptide in particular has access to Chill Clip, which can be incredibly useful. And Scatter Signal has access to Slice and Hatchling, which can be really fun in more strand focus builds. If you haven't tried mixing in some fusion rifles into your PvE builds, you're really missing out. It's worth it to collect a few good rolls and take them for a spin. Rose is another reward from the competitive playlist, and it's a contender for the best hand cannon in the game right now. Hand cannons will always be close to the top of the meta because they afford you the ability to peek shot from behind cover. If you get good at this, you're basically guaranteed a win against any other type of weapon that's not able to peek shot if you play your positions carefully. So why is Rose one of the best hand cannons? That's because it combines a decent stat package and an amazing perk pool on the one hand with an incredibly powerful archetype on the other. Rose is the only lightweight hand cannon remaining in the game after all the other ones got converted to adaptive frames a long time ago. Think about what this means for your gameplay. Not only do you get free extra stats for your mobility, but you also get faster sprint speed, which stacks on top of your movement exotic if you happen to have one. This means you're going to be moving around the map faster than anyone else in the game. Of course, besides good aim, good positioning is the most important factor to winning your PvP duels, and any item which gives you the ability to outposition your opponents basically for free immediately qualifies as a top-notch choice. Wither Horde has been a fantastic weapon in the kinetic slot ever since it was first introduced. It's amazing for ad clear since the huge blight pools on the floor can be placed in front of doorways and under groups of enemies. But it also does some decent work as a DPS tool since the blights can be fired directly to hit bosses and take your enemies. Plus you can double up by placing a blight directly under the enemy that's already ticking away with a direct damage hit. And having intrinsic autoloading holster with a catalyst means you never have to manually reload which is a massive plus for any grenade launcher. Wither Horde is a go-to option for so many of my builds especially for solo play. I find it to be one of the most versatile weapons in the game and it pairs so well with a variety of weapon setups for any engagement range. Welp, for years, in every hand cannon tier list that I created, I always mentioned that the day Thorn finally gets a catalyst that buffs up its range and stability, it will become a monster. And sure enough, it finally happened. In fact, it became such a monster in PvP that Bungie decided to knock it down a peg by nerfing the bonuses added by the catalyst. Despite these nerfs though, Thorn will continue to be a powerful force in the Crucible for a long time. The damage over time effect does so many positive things for you as a player. Any enemy you tag with a thorn bullet won't be able to fully recover their health until the poison damage wears off. This also prevents them from being able to res teammates in Trials of Osiris. Plus, the damage ticks themselves are so powerful that when you have the buffed up version of thorn going, you'll often find yourself with free kills on enemies who try to run away from your gunfights. It's become my favorite hand cannon to use in PvP this season, and it's not at all surprising to see it ranked up so high on the list of the most popular weapons in Trials of Osiris each week. There's one hand cannon in particular that has become extremely popular lately in PvE, and it's a ton of fun to use. Sunshot has had quite the glow up, partially thanks to some mods introduced in the artifact this season that have substantially ramped up the destruction it can deal. With great stats, explosive bullets, and massive explosions on kills, there's not much to dislike about Sunshot. I'm personally really happy to see it rise up, since way back in Season 3, I chose to go Sunshot first instead of Graviton Lance when the choice of the Catalyst was first introduced. Leave a comment if you were playing back in those days. If hand cannons aren't your thing though, Polaris Lance is an amazing alternative and another favorite weapon of mine. You can benefit from similar explosions that Sunshot can deliver, plus a lot of extra range and the perfect 5th explosion shots are really fun to dish out. And if you're a good shot, you basically never have to reload. You can't go wrong with either of these exotic options in a good solar build these days. Steady, steady, 
boom. You just punish the entire opposing team for doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing, sticking together and team shotting. Thanks to your elite gaming chair and your godlike aim, you have landed a clutch headshot on a poor soul and you just blew up their entire team because you are using Cloud Strike. This is a 50 zoom sniper rifle in the energy slot, and with the catalyst it's very snappy with a lot of aim assist. By default, it's a great sniper if you don't happen to get lucky with a god rolled mercurial overreach, but again it spices things up with the exotic perk suddenly turning a precision instrument into a tactical nuke. The thought of dying just because you were too close to a teammate is guaranteed to instill fear and trauma in the hearts of your opponents. Once they're punished just one time, they'll likely change their behavior and stay split up for the rest of the match. This will effectively paralyze them on a psychological level, allowing you to unleash the full power of the dark side upon them and strategically dominate them, maybe to the point where they just uninstall destiny altogether. Oof, maybe I got a little bit carried away there, but seriously, it is tilting getting killed from a Cloud Strike collateral shot. At number 5 for PvE, we have a shotgun that dominated PvP in year 1, and then most players basically forgot it even existed until somewhat recently. Legend of Acrius initially came from the Leviathan raid and was the very first raid exotic in Destiny 2. It deals insane damage with each volley of pellets, and it's one of the highest damage per shot weapons in the entire game making it excellent for burst damage. With the catalyst, it holds a lot more ammo in the magazine, and it's decent for sustained DPS too. Plus with trench barrel, it's a top choice for fights where you need to get up close and personal. Our next gun is the Igneous Hammer, a hand cannon that just feels really good to use. It feels snappy like a clinging magnet on your refrigerator. It's stable, unlike the mental sanity of most of us still playing Destiny in 2024. Anyway, the Igneous Hammer is just really satisfying to use. It's a 120 RPM hand cannon, so yeah, it's not the most lethal in terms of pure time to kill unless you have a damage boost, but it's such a joy to use. It feels like a stable 140, making it very easy to land those shots in the heat of battle. It has awesome perks, awesome stats, and you can get a roll tailored exactly for your needs. Unfortunately, it's lacking explosive payload, but if you really want that, you're going to have to go get yourself a bottom dollar. And there's no way I'm going to play enough Gambit to get a god roll of one of those. The infamous Scalarhorn is up next, and how could I not mention this thing? It's a great rocket by default, especially since it gets two shots in the magazine and the Wolfpack rounds for some extra splash damage. Where it really shines though is its ability to buff your teammates' rockets with the Wolfpack rounds. This means that your teammates can profit from free extra damage while using a legendary rocket launcher, potentially with even better damage perks that stacks on top of the Wolfpack rounds. And if things get really tricky, you can even use Scalarhorn as a mass ad clearing machine. Let's talk about a weapon which is just plain unfair. That would be Conditional Finality, and it's unfair in so many ways. First of all, it's unfair in how it's gated behind so much RNG to just get the thing. Not only do you have to complete the Root of Nightmares raid, which by itself is challenging for new players, but you also have to get lucky enough to get Conditional Finality to drop from the final boss. Then when it comes to using it, or rather playing against it, it's even more unfair. Don't be tricked by that seemingly low range stat, it's actually competing for the furthest hitting pellet shotgun in the game. And even if you don't get the kill, there's a great chance that your first bullet will actually freeze your opponent. Within intended ranges, it's maybe the most lethal shotgun in the game, and it even works well inside of those Void Titan bubbles. And before I forget, did I tell you that Conditional Finality also has the incredibly unfair handling set of 95? Yeah, that's basically a handling speed on par with the OG unnerved quick draw. It stacks this amazing handling with an insane one hit kill range, the ability to kill almost any super for free, and the sneaky chance to freeze people way outside of its intended ranges. It's so infuriating to play against it, and you should definitely use it if you have it, or farm it if you don't yet. Sometimes simplicity is king, and with Tractor Cannon, that's exactly the case. See, when DPSing a boss, you want to get every extra bit of damage that you possibly can, and Tractor Cannon's debuff is literally a free 30% extra damage for your entire team. That's the highest debuff in the game, sharing that spot with the Void Hunter's Tether. But then again, if you have a hunter, why not have them run Tractor Cannon instead and then use something like Celestial Nighthawk and a Golden Gun for even more damage? It's a recipe for some absolutely ridiculous damage phases. Sometimes an above average gun can actually be elevated to elite status if there's a way to easily get it, and this gun is a prime example of that. I'm talking about the Unending Tempest, the Crucible 600 RPM Stasis SMG. It has pretty solid stats, you can get up to 88 range which can be further increased to 100 with something like Fragile Focus. Of course there's quite a few serious damage perks too if you want to go down that route, and most notably it has access to Target Lock which has been a major pain point for many players in the Crucible ever since it was first introduced. I think the fact that it's so easy to obtain through the Crucible also has to be taken into account, which is why it's so popular every single week in Trials of Osiris. I mean come on look at this usage chart. 
I get roasted in the comments if I didn't at least mention this weapon. But I do think despite how popular it is, there's still one other PvP weapon that slightly edges it out and I saved that one for last. Ugh, aiming. Why would anyone want to have to do that? I wish there was a gun where I could just click and have everything in front of me blow up instantaneously. Oh wait, there is such a gun and it's called Forbearance from the Vow of the Disciple Raid. This is a waveframe grenade launcher with the key perk Chain Reaction, which as of right now can't be found on any other waveframe grenade launcher. So not only does it have the potential to get you a massive multi-kill, each and every one of those combatants you killed will also explode, making a huge area of effect to pick up even more kills. If you also have Ambitious Assassin in the left column, you can get two of these highly destructive shots in the magazine for double the carnage. Plus these hits give you free health back from the Soul Drinker perk just by reloading. There's a reason that this thing has been a strong contender in the meta ever since it was first introduced, and I think it will continue being popular for a very long time to come. Even though Unending Tempest is perhaps the most popular SMG in Trials every weekend, I still believe one other gun edges it out. You might have seen it coming, but even after the nerfs, I'm still ranking the Immortal as the number one weapon for PvP. It drops exclusively from Trials, and you can even get the Adept version to put an Adept range mod on it. The downside of course is that you need to go flawless to get such a role, which is naturally going to limit how many players are able to wield it. With a maximum range setup, you can get an absolutely insane 80 range, which can be yet improved again all the way up to 100 range if you're the last player alive on your team and have Alacrity active. Plus it has access to Keep Away, which is basically always active when you need it. It has the deadly perk Target Lock, which even after the nerf still cooks enemies if you're not missing your shots. And finally, as a nice touch, you can also synergize this weapon with any Strand build. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the little bugs go get me an extra kill after I finished off the first enemy with Immortal. This SMG is really a pain to play against in PvP, and if you master it, you will be a deadly force in duels. It's really at minimum one of the very best guns in the entire game, if not the outright best. And our final slot goes to a rocket launcher that used to be a complete joke and is now basically the king of all legendary rockets in the game. Apex Predator had a massive surge in usage when it became craftable. And now with combinations like Reconstruction plus Bait and Switch, it's an absolute top DPS option for many fights in the game. You can also go for Bipod if you're looking for more of a high burst damage roll. This was once almost a meme drop when it was first earned from the Last Wish raid, and now it's nearly a DPS staple in every LFG Raiders toolkit. And again, since it's craftable, you just need to collect your red borders and you're able to create any version that you like. Up next, check out my video on the best new weapons in Season 23. It's linked on screen and in the description.